Welcome to Rethink, the podcast that empowers you to challenge your existing beliefs and embrace new, more productive ways of thinking. Here at Rethink, we believe that the key to self-fulfillment lies in shattering old thought patterns and adopting new mindsets that support personal growth and empowerment. With expert guests and thought leaders from a wide range of fields, we explore strategies and insights that can help you achieve success and fulfillment in all areas of your life. From relationships to career, business ownership, and health, you are the source of your own success. We're just here to help you tap into your true potential and create a brighter future. So join us on the journey of personal growth and empowerment, and let's rethink what's possible for our lives. Today on Things You Should Know, we're going to be talking about the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. So hang around. Here at Things You Should Know podcast, our focus varies from commonly asked questions like, what are the top email apps for iPhone users? Or how much does it cost to go to Disney World anyway? To the trending topics of the day, such as, are taxes going up or down? And who's Elon Musk? We shed light on things you probably have always wondered about, but you never got around to investigating them yourself. This podcast brings you the answers to your most commonly asked questions and makes you smarter just by listening. Information empowers, and the more information you have, the better decisions you can make, and ultimately, your quality of life is based on the decisions you make. So, Thanks for joining the discussion and make sure that you subscribe today and not miss out on any future episodes of Things You Should Know. So guys, a few days ago, uh, we did a a podcast on uh, vaccine and particularly we talked about the Pfizer vaccine. And I told you during that podcast that we would be going through the other vaccines, the Moderna, the uh, Johnson & Johnson, which is what we're going to talk about today, and the Azteca, which uh, we don't have the information on yet, but that's going to be forthcoming. Uh, Before we jump into the uh, discussion for today, uh, the call to action is always the same, and I thank you in advance for doing so. Please subscribe, like, and share. Please subscribe, like, and share. And uh, we would really appreciate uh, a nice review, if you don't mind. So each week, uh, we bring to you uh, some exciting new uh, content. And this week, we're going to be talking about the vaccine. And I think uh, this is, uh, of course, a trending topic. Everybody's uh, concerned about uh, COVID and how we're fighting it. And the vaccines, of course, have been uh, a very important tool in in fighting COVID-19. Uh, So many people uh, across the nation, across the world are getting vaccinated. Primarily uh, Pfizer and Moderna uh, vaccines are what's available now. So the Johnson & Johnson information has recently come to us and I want to share with you. So um, hold on to your seats. Let's get going. So first of all, uh, how does it work and why does it matter? How does it work and why does it matter? I think I mentioned to you a few shows ago that I had heard a doctor on the Howard Stern show called Dr. Angus, and he really talked about the Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine and the uh, Azteca vaccine as a one-shot option. Uh, you know, you don't need the two shots. And also there were no temperature requirements. Uh, and just, you know, from a broad standpoint, you think, OK, that's a lot easier uh, to administrate. And also think about the fact that this could get to a lot of different people in the world, not just the United States, but in the world. You're talking about third world countries and places like that, where if you're talking about just one shot, uh, a million people vaccinated would be a million shots. Well, right now with the Pfizer and Moderna, there's a follow-up that's required, and we have to make sure that that's done in order to get the uh, effic- efficacy rates uh, that the uh, that the drugs, uh, you know, uh, suggest. So anyway, let's get going. So there's a third vaccine now to fight the COVID-19, and of course, it's Johnson & Johnson. Uh, We expect this to be authorized uh, in the United States in the very near future. I would say probably around the March 
mid to late March time frame. Uh, the vaccine was made through a collaboration of uh, Johnson & Johnson's Belgium-based vaccine division. Uh, it's Janssen Pharmaceutical. And uh, there's a Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center uh, also that worked to bring this uh, vaccine uh, to fruition. It works a bit differently than the um, other technology, the Pfizer and the Moderna. So let's talk about how effective it is first. Uh, so the numbers right now say that this particular shot is a single shot vaccine is shown uh, to be 66 percent effective in preventing moderate and severe disease in what's called the global phase three trial. The vaccine is 85 percent effective overall in preventing hospitalization and death in all regions where it was tested. The efficacy against moderate and severe disease range from one country to another. For example, 72% in the U.S., 66% in Latin America, and 57% in South America. So the measurements started uh, one month after the shot was given. So, for example, in South America, there were 95% of cases in the trial uh, were due to a variant known as B1.351, which is known to be more contagious, and it carries mutations uh, that may make the virus less susceptible to the antibody immune response, including antibodies prompted by the vaccine. So that's why the South Africa numbers were lower. There's a contagion, a variant there uh, in South Africa in that particular COVID-19 uh, structure that's different in some of the other streams that you see in different parts of the world. For example, the United States. Uh, even though uh, even those who got moderate cases of COVID-19 in the trial tended to develop a milder course and fewer symptoms. This is according to Dr. Uh, Mammon, who is of the Janssen's Global uh, Research. He's the head of research and development there. So from one month after the shot, all hospitalizations and death occurred in only the placebo group, meaning they didn't actually get the vaccine. So let's talk about how it works. So the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is what's known as a non-replicating, a non-replicating viral vector vaccine using a common cold virus called adenovirus 26 Adenovirus 26, ADENO virus 26. So scientists uh, make this vaccine by taking a small amount of genetic material that codes for a piece of the novel coronavirus and integrating it with a weakened version of the common cold virus, the adenom. I'm having trouble with this word. Adenovirus 26. Adenovirus 26. So the fourth in line, in my opinion, for the vaccine to be approved is a company called AstraZeneca, AstraZeneca. So we have Pfizer, Moderna. We're talking about Johnson & Johnson today. And the fourth will come from AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca uses a similar platform to Johnson & Johnson, but its adenovirus comes from a chimpanzee and not from a common cold. So this adenovirus is the um, variable here uh, as it relates to uh, the vaccine and the component how it's made up. So the adenovirus carries the genetic material from the coronavirus into human cells, tricking them into making pieces of the coronavirus spike protein, the part usually attached to the cells. The immune system then reacts against these pieces of the coronavirus. So you're not being actually infected with the virus that can give you COVID-19. When you get this particular vaccine, it, uh, it just has some of the harmless COVID virus proteins on the surface. This is explained by Dr. Schaffner, who is an uh, internist and an infectious disease specialist with Vanderbilt University in the Department of Human Health. So essentially, it's a sheep in wool's clothing. And when your immune system sees it, it responds to it and it creates protection against it in the future 
against the real virus, which would potentially be COVID-19. So let's back up a little bit. When we talked about Pfizer and we talked about Moderna, they went into great detail explaining that you were not getting any live virus. You were not actually being given um, COVID-19 because many people think, <clears throat> excuse me, for example, with the flu shot, many people think you're actually being given a strand of the flu. So your body, you know, accepts it and begins to build antibodies against it and, and so forth. Well, uh, these particular drug companies have said, no, you're not actually getting COVID-19. And so with Pfizer and Moderna, they said, no, you're not getting any live virus. Well, in this case, you are sort of getting a live virus with Johnson & Johnson. But what you're getting on the live side is the common cold virus, the adenovirus 26. And with the AstraZeneca, you're getting a coronavirus spike protein simulation. In other words, it's the harmless piece of coronavirus. It gets into your cells and your cells begin to understand what it is and begin to fight against it. It's not actually the the virus itself. So I hope that part's clear. Um, so how is it different from the other coronavirus 19 vaccines? Let's get a little bit more into detail with that. So there's a gentleman, Dr. Paul Offit, who is the director of vaccine education at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. He says that the Moderna and the Pfizer and the Johnson and Johnson COVID-19 vaccines all take a similar approach, but there's small differences with Johnson and Johnson. So let's get into that. In the case of Moderna and Pfizer vaccines, you're just giving a gene in a lipid nanoparticle or a fat droplet. In the case of Johnson & Johnson, you're given the gene in a virus that can't rep- reproduce itself. So with Johnson & Johnson, it looks like you're actually getting a gene in a virus. You're not getting that with Moderna and Pfizer. You're simply given a gene in a lipid nanoparticle or a fat droplet. That's how it's introduced to your system. Johnson & Johnson is giving you the gene in a virus that can reproduce itself. So the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is the only COVID-19 vaccine so far to be given in a single dose. And I think that's incredibly important in terms of distribution, in terms of effectability, in terms of being able to really um, uh, mount a a strong, strong attack against this virus, you know, internationally. So Moderna and Pfizer's, obviously, you have to have, you know, the follow up shot in order to have the type of effectiveness uh, your body needs in order to uh, uh, be protected against COVID-19. So, you know, you here's the deal. If you get a person into your doctor's office one time for a shot and it could be a one shot deal and then they go about their business, that's really best case scenario because getting them in is really the difficult part. Getting them in twice. You know, I, I'm eternally optimistic and I'm hoping people are following up and doing what they're supposed to do. But I just know that uh, 100% is hard to hit when you're talking about getting two two shots. So you're getting one shot and then in a series of days, you're talking about coming back and getting a follow-up shot. So hopefully people are taking this seriously enough where they're doing it. Uh, like Moderna, uh, J- Johnson & Johnson can also be kept at regular refrigerated uh, temperatures and does not need a deep freeze like Pfizer. So it's not that strong uh, deep freeze uh, temperature requirement like Pfizer. So that's important because of transportation. That's important because of storage. It's important because of a number of things um, and a number of components. Now, how does a single dose shot affect the rollout? How does it affect the rollout? A single dose shot uh, would be much easier to administer and it would mean that more people could be vaccinated as soon. I'm sorry, as none would need to be set aside to give someone a second shot. That's what I was talking about earlier. It's much easier to get someone at a uh, shot center, a doctor's office, I don't know, a, a pharmacy, wherever you're distributing it and give them that one shot. And knowing after that one shot, that person's been vaccinated as opposed to saying, OK, Susie's come in on Tuesday. She's gotten the shot. She has a follow up for the 23rd to get her second shot. Well, Susie doesn't follow up on the 23rd. 23rd and she hasn't had her second shot she's not really fully vaccinated so the advantage the advantage goes up in neon says uh dr uh 
um, Sheffner, who believes in adding a vaccine like this would really accelerate vaccination efforts in the U.S. and, of course, around the world. Now, if it's a single dose vaccine, then a billion vaccination doses would translate into a billion people vaccinated. I mean, that's just simple math. Um, now, the cold change advantage, the cold change advantage, Johnson and Johnson's other advantage is that it can be stored at regular refrigerated temperatures, unlike the Pfizer vaccine, which needs that deep freeze piece. The vaccine is stable for up to three months at 36 degrees Fahrenheit or 46 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, 36 to 46 degrees Fahrenheit, the company says. Uh, That means that healthcare facilities would not have to buy extra equipment to store the vaccine. And you've probably heard a number of times where either doctor's offices or hospitals or these facilities having issue with their storage facility with their equipment either it goes down you know the power goes out something happens to where uh the it puts the vaccines in jeopardy uh it wasn't too long ago today is uh the last day of january and a few days ago in seattle there was uh an outage some sort of power issue and vaccines were being compromised and uh kudos to the folks there in seattle they sent out at all points blast saying, hey, we don't want these vaccines to go to waste. If it, we're, we're bypassing protocol as it relates to uh, your age and your um, pre-existing conditions. Anybody who needs them can come down and get them because we'd rather give them to someone than to have them go to waste. And folks just came down, you know, one, two, three o'clock in the morning to get to get those shots. Uh, but with this vaccine, you're not going to have to worry about buying, you know, the, the, the additional equipment for the deep freeze like like Pfizer. And I think to, to some degree, Pfizer is probably working on uh, some newer technology as it relates to um, the, uh, the the temperature uh, requirements for their primary vaccine. Uh, but getting it to the marketplace was, was, was prevalent. So um, kudos to Pfizer for that. <clears throat> now, if they're successful, these vaccines would especially be popular in the developing world, which is great because they would be easy to store and administer. The vaccines would also be popular in rural communities in the U.S. and regular regular doctor's offices that may not have access or the budget to afford specialized equipment, i.e. these deep freezers. So in other words, we could bring the vaccine to many more people rather than bringing the people to the vaccine, which on the, you know, with the temperature requirements and stuff like that, you know, the people have to come to the vaccine. So uh, what happens next? It says Johnson & Johnson's ready to go. So what happens next? Uh, the company will request what's known as a EUA. We talked about that a little earlier. EUA is a emergency use authorization. They are requested from the FDA uh, in early February. So hopefully within the next week or so. Once an application is submitted, the FDA uh, looks very, very carefully at the data in each age group and each demographic group and begin to make their decision uh, from that point. Now, Dr. Anthony Fossey, who's been uh, very um, tied to this coronavirus, particularly in the news, uh, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, said uh, during a call on Friday um, that the FDA uh, would look very, very carefully at these, at, at these numbers, uh, particularly the age group and the demographic group. And after the meeting, FDA staff members considered the committee input along with the agency's evaluation of the company's data. And they'll make a decision about whether the vaccine should be authorized or not. Shortly after an EUA, the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, also known as ACIP, goes through the data also. So this has to be approved through FDA and then also approved through the CDC, basically. So the EUA, the emergency use authorization, should be applied for by Johnson & Johnson within the next week. Now, once the CDC committee has made a recommendation and it has been approved by the director of CDC, the company plans to ship the vaccines immediately and it can go into arms right away. But it's got to meet these first two hurdles, FDA and CDC. Now, how long does something like this take in terms of this process? So if they file next week, what can we expect? Well, with the Pfizer vaccine, it took uh, a little over three weeks from the time that the company submitted its data and they filed for the EUA until they actually got the approval. 
uh, with Moderna, uh, it took a little more than two weeks. So about three weeks with Pfizer, two weeks with Moderna. Uh, if the vaccine is authorized for EUA, uh, the plan is uh, to have the supply immediately available upon launch. This is from Johnson & Johnson. So you can expect somewhere between two and three weeks, less than 30 days from the time that they apply. So, again, this is the last day of January. So tomorrow is February 1st. Let's say the company goes goes ahead and submits for their um EUA on tomorrow, and the data is uh, immediately began begins to be you know um, looked through by FDA and then of course by CDC. You're talking about probably two to three weeks. We're we're going to hear something definitive about the Johnson and Johnson one shot vaccine. Um, if and when this gets approved, how many doses uh, are available like right now to begin to get out to the people? Well, the U.S. has ordered 100 million doses and the company has been manufacturing it while the test while they were testing the vaccine. So they're kind of running these things con- congruently. Um, typically, companies wait you know, to make the vaccine after it's been approved. But all of that, of course, changed during this particular pandemic. So, again, guys, uh, this is the Johnson & Johnson overview, the COVID-19 vaccine overview. And I'll circle back in a few days, uh, probably within the next two to three weeks, to let you know where the company is on uh, getting this approved. Uh, I think if the data holds, uh, I think they've seen they've had some benchmarks, of course, with Pfizer and Moderna. So I don't uh, see why this these guys would not be uh, approved. Uh, there are some stark differences, though, in the technologies. So perhaps that could cause for a little more uh, review, a little more Q&A uh, before this is approved by FDA and then further by CDC. But hopefully these numbers are correct. You're talking about 66 percent effectiveness. Uh, and preventing moderate and severe disease globally. Uh, So the numbers look relatively good. And there were no deaths and no hospitalizations under the group that was tested. So that's all good news. Well, guys, as always, I appreciate you hanging out with me. I hope you learned something today here at Things You Should Know. And if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and subscribe. You would not hurt my feelings if you wrote us a review. Please share and like and comment, do all those good things. And we'll be back soon with another episode of Things You Should Know. Have a good one. That's all for today's episode of Rethink. We hope that you've enjoyed this exploration of new ideas and perspectives and found valuable insights and strategies that you can apply to your life. Remember, you are the source of your own success and fulfillment. And by embracing new ways of thinking, you can unlock your true potential and yes, create the life that you truly desire. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, we encourage you to support the podcast by sharing it with your friends, your family members, your loved ones and associates, and even your followers on social media. Also, leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Lastly, don't forget to check out our show notes for free downloads and empowering ebooks that can help you on your journey of personal growth and empowerment. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We look forward to exploring more ideas and insights with you in the next episode of Rethink.